Come in and attach the 8-aught thread directly behind the bead. Snip off the excess. And we'll start by tying in the ribbing. And the ribbing that I use, I prefer to use on this, is just a little leftover 4X tippet. It's a little more flexible and it's much more durable than the traditional wire ribbing on the pattern. So I'm going to come in, start it just behind the bead there. I just want to catch it with a wrap or two. And then I can wrap it down the far side of the shank. And I'm going to take that right down to where the hook just starts to bend down. Then I'm going to bring in my first clump of pheasant tail fibers. And for the tail and the body wrap, I usually shoot for uh, anywhere from maybe six to eight fibers. I want those fibers to be approximately or about the length of the hook shank when I tie them in. So I'll switch that over to my left hand here. I'm going to catch it with a wrap or two. And then I'm going to take that thread and I'm going to return it to just behind the bead. Now I'm a huge stickler on durability. So before I start to wrap this, I'm going to take just a little bit of Zappa Gap here and put that on my bogging. And I'm just going to touch or coat that little area where I'm going to wrap that. That's going to absorb through those fibers when they come forward. It's really going to lock them down into place. So once I have that taken care of, I'm going to take those fibers and I'm going to start to wrap. And I want to cover two thirds of the hook shank here. So the rear, approximately the rear two thirds, I'm going to cover with these wraps. So once I get to about that point, I feel like we got that two thirds covered. I'm going to take my thread and take one wrap around the back of those fibers. A few wraps in front. And then I'm going to snip that excess. Now I'm going to come forward with that ribbing. And I'm going to just simply wrap that up and over the feather. This provides a little bit of segmentation, but much more importantly, it locks down those tail fibers. So we catch that from behind. A few wraps in front. And snip off the excess. So when I bring in my next two materials here. Uh, I'm going to bring in my next clump of pheasant tail fibers and once again for the thorax I, I usually just try to hit in about six to eight fibers. It doesn't have to be perfect somewhere in there. So you have a couple options. Um, you could tie these in wherever you want. You could trim them to length. Um, I kind of like those fine tips at the end. So I want to tie these in at about twice the length of my thorax because we're going to end up folding them over and then folding the legs back. So twice the length of the thorax are a little bit longer. So I'm going to measure that out. Okay, about the length of the hook shank, I guess, is, is another gauge that you could use. Come in, snip off the excess. And then I'm going to catch those right behind the bead. And then wrap back just over the thorax area. So those are going to extend back. For the peacock curl, I always, always, always use two strands uh, for a couple reasons. Number one, it fills it out a little bit better. Uh, and number two, I'm going to twist them together after I tie them in. And that just gives me better strength. So same deal here. I'm going to take these, pretty much touch them to the back of the bead. Catch them with my thread. Wrap that thread forward right to the back of the bead. So when I get these ready to tie in, like I said, I'm going to take them and I'm just going to twist. And you can see the base of those twists together. It flares out the fibers a little bit. It also gives them a little extra strength. And then very simply, I'm going to wrap forward. Cover in that thorax area until I get right to the back of the bead. Come up over the back. Cinch it off. A couple wraps in front. And then snip that excess. So now, uh, for the first step, I'm going to take these fibers that I tied in for the thorax, and I'm very simply going to pull them forward, and I want to catch those right behind the bead again. So the top part here is going to form my wing case. Catch those with a wrap or two, and then approximately, I want half of these fibers to splay off to the left and half of them to splay off to the right. 
So I reach in here with my fingers. And we're going to start with one side or the other. It doesn't matter. You can start far side or near side. That's entirely up to you. But when you get one side kind of pulled back, you're going to catch it. And I like to catch it. If you look at the wrap here, if I come just a little ways back off the bead, it catches those legs and tends to, to press them down and out to the side a little bit more effectively. So I've got that side caught with my thread. You can see how the legs kind of splay. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing on the opposite side. Just kind of force them back with your fingers. Catch them just a, just a scotch bit back off the bead. And you can see how my legs are splayed out to the side now. Now some people are particular uh, with how they like their legs. I'm perfectly content with how those are situated. And so I'm going to catch it with another one or two wraps. And then I'm going to come in and I'm going to whip finish it by hand. Now for the sake of durability, uh, the top of this wing case will kind of get chewed up. And so I'm just going to take a little, little drop of zappy gap there on my bodkin. And I'm just going to touch it to the top of that. And that's going to soak that through. Absorb that up and it's just going to hold those fibers together a little bit more effectively as I fish that.